Hi, and welcome to the first of hopefully many episodes of Crazy Physics Claims, or CPC. Not to be confused with PCP, which is something entirely different. Before starting, I have a quick announcement. The next Idiots for Physics is getting prepped, and I'm really excited about it. I don't want to give anything away, but it involves a Gandalf figurine and several pounds of raw pork. The basic idea behind this series is to give viewers some amount of literacy when it comes to science in the popular press, and in particular physics. The first step in this process is actually identifying a crazy physics claim. So how do I do it? My rule of thumb is that if something sounds too awesome to be true, look into it. Headlines like, Neutrinos found to travel faster than light. Cold fusion achieved in a garage. Firefly season 2 announced. Should make you instantly suspicious. Generally, the more you want a claim to be true, the more skeptical you should be. So let's get to today's claim. I recently came across several blogs that were talking about systems with temperatures below absolute zero. This is strange. In fact, it's really strange. As the name suggests, absolute zero is, by definition, the lowest temperature a system can have. So how does it even make sense to have a temperature below it? So is this claim crazy? Is it accurate? Well, after tracking down the original paper, talking to colleagues, and doing a fair bit of general research on the subject, I can answer that question with a completely unambiguous... sorta? In fact, they've sort of been doing it since the 1950s. And what the heck do I mean by that? Well, to answer that, I have to take a step back and look at what temperature actually means. The simplest definition of a temperature is that it's a measure of the thermal energy of a system. Most people have at least a vague notion that molecules in a hotter object have more energy than the molecules in a colder one. This energy can come from two sources. The first is kinetic energy, which has to do with the speed and angular momentum of the individual molecules. The second is the potential energy, which comes from the molecules' interactions with each other and with external fields like the gravitational, electric, and magnetic fields. The exact form of the potential energy depends on what kind of a system we're dealing with. Is it a gas, a liquid, a crystal, a condensate, or any one of the other many possible states of matter? You may ask, what exactly do I mean when I say that atoms in a hotter system have more energy? Physicists learned a long time ago that the energy distribution of particles at a given temperature follows something called the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. This just means that the energies of the particles are distributed according to the exponent of negative E over the temperature times the Boltzmann constant. If you aren't familiar with this distribution, don't worry about it. All it means is that for energies bigger than KBT, the chance of a molecule having that energy decreases exponentially. This distribution is what allows us to play with negative temperatures. You might ask, what would happen if we switched the sign in the exponent? Instead of the exponent of negative E over KBT, you would get the exponent of plus E over KBT. And this would look like the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution of a negative temperature system. What's strange is that instead of having a really low energy, as you would expect from a negative temperature system, these atoms want to have as much energy as possible. For classical systems, this doesn't actually make sense. All the particles would have to have an infinite amount of energy. So how did the scientists do it? Just like a New Age guru trying to justify some kind of crazy healing potion, they used quantum mechanics. The big difference between the physicists and the New Age gurus is that the physicists weren't spewing gibberish. By taking advantage of certain properties of nuclear spin, they were able to set up a system with a maximum energy. This effectively blocked the explosive high-energy part of the negative temperature Boltzmann distribution. When you have a maximum in the energy, it is actually possible to set up the whole system in a way that behaves as though it has a negative temperature. But what did I mean when I said, sorta, to the question, is this claim crazy? This is a nitpicky detail that has to do with how the upper bound on the energy was actually put into place. In quantum mechanics, there exist gaps in the energies a trapped molecule or nucleus can have. This is actually what the word quantum means. Quanta comes from the word quantized. What physicists did was find a system where one of these gaps was enormous, much bigger than the other energies involved in the system. Locally, the system looks like it has a maximum energy state, and can therefore have a negative temperature. But if we zoomed out, and zoomed out, and zoomed out, you would eventually see these higher energy states, 
And if the system were truly at a negative temperature, these states would have to be dominant. But as I said, this detail is nitpicky. The physicists who work with these systems know about this technicality, they aren't trying to hide it from anyone, and the energy gap is large enough that the low energy states can be considered isolated from the higher energy ones. Thank you for listening to this first episode of Crazy Physics Claims. I hope to see you again soon.